I've got a big problem. I reckon you've got the same problem, but I'm going to fix mine with this. Hey everyone, Pete here from Northern Works. I don't know what it's like where you are, but in the UK right now, we're in the middle of an energy crisis. Sky high bills that today soared further. And half of UK households are going to be in fuel poverty by January. Gas more than doubling, electricity just under that. And while I can't do anything about the actual energy prices, I can do something about how much energy we consume. And one place where we use a lot of energy is heat in our living room. There's nothing like a cosy night in on the sofa. Sadly, most of the time, our living room is nothing like a cosy night in. It doesn't matter how much I pump up the radiators, this room always feels like the inside of a fridge. I think I found the problem. I read recently that the average house loses up to 15% of its heat through the floor. And I can definitely believe it, our floors are always freezing. You know what they say, chilly feet, chilly heart. They do say that, don't they? So I decided to try an experiment. I set up this second thermometer right underneath where the thermostat that controls the heating is. This thing is consistently about two degrees lower than the thermostat at all times of the day. That's more than 10% of heat being lost through the floors. Can I change that? I'm gonna try with this. This is aluminium foil bubble insulation, which is basically bubble wrap covered in aluminium foil. But even though it's only four millimeters thick, supposedly it's got the same thermal performance as 75 millimeters of traditional foam insulation. It slips right in between the floorboards and the carpet. And the best part is it only cost me 75 quid. So unlike traditional foam insulation, I don't have to take any of these floorboards up. And it should be a super cost effective way of us maybe saving a bit of money on our energy bills. I found this stuff really easy to work with. It's just like laying normal underlay. You work in strips, lay the roll right up to the wall and then use a knife just to trim it to fit. Once it's down, you wanna cover any gaps with aluminium tape. Your flooring then just goes over the top. This stuff is supposed to work just as well under carpet, real wood or laminate floors. This isn't an ad. I bought this with my own money. I wanted to do the experiment and I thought at this price it's worth the risk. I'm actually planning to replace all of the carpets in here with wooden floors in the new year and I thought better to experiment now before committing to everywhere in the downstairs. You done? I think the real big question here is, will it work? Why don't you leave a comment now before I tell you the answers and see if you're right. It's a shame these floors are so drafty because the floorboards are actually really nice. Okay, results time. It's a few days since I've had the insulation down and I've put the thermostat and the thermometer back in their usual places on the ground and at chest height. And I have seen some differences. The first one is maybe a slight disappointment. I had hoped that the temperature difference between the top and the bottom would really close. In reality, I've probably seen maybe uh, less than a degree of change, which is still a change and it is an improvement, but I think the physics of how heat circulates around a room is just going to be against us on that one. What has been interesting is actually in the change to the average minimum temperature in the room overnight, which has probably been around about two and a half degrees, sometimes even three degrees. And that's quite a dramatic shift of almost 15% in difference. And that means in the morning when the heating comes on, it's got less in order to bring it up to the temperature that we're actually after, which has got to have an impact on our energy bills. How much do I think we'll actually save? Well, if we assume that 40% of our bills are heating and maybe 50% of that bill is just this room alone, and then we factor in that 15%.
Honestly, I think that maths is far too complex to work out and we won't really know the answer until we get an energy bill. But with that said, do I think that this is worth it? So far I'd say absolutely yes. Properly insulating our homes is one of the best ways that we can reduce our energy consumption, which is good for our bank balance, but it's also admittedly a tiny step in the fight against climate change. And this seems like a really cost-effective way, and to be honest, like pretty simple way of achieving really good insulation figures. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you found it useful, then give it a like and let me know. This year I've set myself the challenge to do more DIY home improvement projects and to start building some of my own furniture as well. And if that's something you'd be interested in following along with, then I think you'll like this video too.